hello again. Uh, so I wanted to do uh, start a series like this for a bit, particularly since um, since test flight, you know, uh, the developer uh, Agathorn came back uh, and started kind of fleshing it out again more, and you know, community's been helping him to some extent with that. So just starting an RP zero career. It's currently 1.0.5. You know, who knows? I might end up transitioning it to 1.1 or just doing a quick start over. But it's going to be a descriptive introduction, you know, kind of describe, you know, what I'm building, why I'm building it, etc. So I wanted to start out from total scratch, because if you don't start out um, with uh, opt kind of ideal settings for your play style, then you know, you're not going to have a fun time. And the, kind of the whole point of any game is to have, uh, have fun. So I'm just starting a new RP0 career right from the regular career starting uh, screen. So first off, I'll just switch to hard, because that aligns these numbers pretty close to what we want. Um, I'm perfectly fine getting rid of contracts I don't like, so I completely remove that. And I'm going to set, um, Nathan Kell definitely suggests setting funny penalties low, uh, lower. Let's see, I do want that. I don't care if buildings uh, get destroyed. Uh, let's see, sure, sure, yes. Um, beyond that, I think I'll pretty much leave it as is. But the funding penalties, I, you know, uh, it was suggested that it's set to 100. Um, because I test some contracts, I may as well I'll also set this to you know just regular. But you know I'm going to get less money. I'm going to get less science and reputation from things. So I might have to do a little grinding, uh, which is which is fine. I usually normally just play on normal. Um, but the big difference for me is going to be entry purchase required on research. Now, depending on how much career uh, you actually play, regular or any other career. So this means when you unlock new parts, you're going to have to pay for them uh, before you first use them. And I, and I find I would not recommend, this is the first time I'm starting a career mode with that option on. That's because um, if, you're, if you're new to it or you haven't really made up most of the run through of a career, um, you're not. You might not be sure which parts are the important ones that you want, and I find it a bit punitive to have to pay for a part when you're just even learning what parts are even worth or for. Like it, maybe it would be nice to have a mechanism where you pay a small amount just to have it temporarily unlocked. Of course, that would require a whole new mod and everything, but you know, just an idea, right? Where. That's why I generally leave that option off, so I can kind of play with different parts and really figure out which parts I like work well together. And then, kind of after a playthrough or two, like I am at now, then I set it that way. So let's see, so I want to select the default RP0, so I don't want this pooled. So what this difference means, how I'm changing this, if I have a launch site, like I'm going to do most of my launch sites from KSC, I'm doing kind of a FASA America playthrough, uh, and if I set up a launch site at like Kodiak in Alaska for polar or something near the equator, you know, I do want to have to pay a bit of cost in order to set up those facilities rather than if I've done upgrades here, them also applying elsewhere. So it's just a bit more difficulty. Um, let's see what else. Auto stop time warp. Um, I think it actually left these how I had them. Stop time warp, auto KSC alarms. So I think it actually left them how I did. I think I might have saved over the preset. So when I selected this, it might not be the same as what you end up having, uh, but I want that option off. I don't want a kick, um, Kerbal Alarm Clock alarms by default, because I find that just slows it down all the time, like it creeps to a basic thing like reconditioning the pad, but you may want that on. But I'm just telling you what it is, why I'm having it off. Uh, override launch button, sure, I think that's fine. Uh, auto stop time warp, yes. Um, I think at some other point I've also tweaked things so that it like, uh, if I want it to warp to something it will do it really quickly, like it will warp exactly to that moment rather than it taking 30 seconds to hit that time. So I think that's uh, sufficient, but so, so you can see what options I'm setting. Uh, spend upgrades, now here I'm less certain it's been a little while. Um, so I found that, so you don't get a second rate until you do an upgrade on this facility. I believe it's it's the VAB, uh, which will allow you to um, build a second line of craft, and then you could also upgrade, when you upgrade this, you'll also be able to launch two vehicles at a time. Uh, so let me just rename this launch pad one. And so later on, if I, if I set up a new one, then I'll be able to do two launches at a time. 
our, our, our stage two launches, um, you know, kind of side by side. So let's see how to spend the upgrades. Um, I don't want to, you know, because I'm, you know, I only have enough money to buy one point. I'm not going to spend them all right now. There's and there's no harm in in, in doing that. I can just go up to upgrades and spend them whenever I want to. So I'm going to warp to the daytime. So I'm going to build my first sounding rocket, kind of show you all the things you want on it. So a sounding rocket, it comes from a weird French word, I think, for like exploration. The um, My recollection is that it comes from like a concept or term for exploring under the water. And so here we're just um, sending things up into the atmosphere, analogous to underwater. So sounding rocket, note, um, ignore cost. I, I don't plan to use that right now, although maybe I will. Um, so it's this is going to be my core, just like a regular probe core. Now uh, RP0 includes a new concept called avionics. So you have to have a certain amount of avionics controlling abilities to be able to actually steer a craft. Now my first sounding rockets and your first sounding rockets won't have that ability. So it's going to be a really narrow rocket. Is 0.3 right now? It's 0.4. Okay, uh, and then probably going to load in some new textures between plays, but I plan to take this, I hope to take this playthrough pretty far. Uh, up through, you know, manned missions, I plan to use, uh, I, I once played a pretty fast playthrough of with fast hard, hard, hardware because I didn't have to make these historical replicas with proc parts, I could just uh, make them just with the existing parts. So it was quite fun, historically accurate, you know, things I like. Um, so ignore the avionics warning here. Uh, in another video, I'll launch something like a V2 that does where you can actually steer it a bit, whereas this is just going to go where I point it. So that's normally this warning. I never you know, click set to hide OK because I do want to know about that all the time. So I'm using the AeroB engine. It's this really cheap, weak engine right here. This, so this A4 engine, that's the V2, like the Vengeance Weapon 2, that both the Russians and Americans got a bit of a head start on larger rockets because they got to take that technology and the technologists from the from the Germans. So they're pretty expensive. Um, if you're not sure what the pricing means, just think of them as relative numbers. It doesn't really matter. But the way we come up with the pricing behind the scenes is it's, a, it's 150 times, I believe, $1,965. So right now we're before that time. You know, Don't worry about inflation and things. Those don't shift. It's just kind of a fixed scale we can use to research and convert. So this is a nice, cheap engine to start with. And then Aero B. So let's see, it's pressure fed. So I need to keep in mind it's going to need pressurized fuel. So tank type fuselage, which, which this started on. So I have structural as an option or fuselage. I'm going to have to learn to pronounce that right. It starts pressurized. So I tell it to auto fill fuels. It tells me I get 47 seconds of burn time. So I'm going to stretch this a little bit. I'm going to stretch it to at exactly a minute of burn time. I'm even going to just tweak this just a slight. So I want a minute of burn time because if I right click on this, there, there are other way, places to see this, and I'll show them to you later. But one easy way to see um, test flight will not only cause my engines to be able to fail, but this first version of the engine, let's see, the WAC Corporal, how only has a burn time of a rated burn time of 50 seconds. So burn through penalty 100% at 80. So I don't know if that's, I don't recall if that's a bonus, like it's going to go, uh, so my I'll have twice the likelihood of burn through. Doesn't matter to me at the point. The point is, I'm going to try to stick as best as I can to these burn times. So actually, I had been looking at the wrong number myself uh, before. So 50 seconds, that's actually as long as I want this to burn for. Okay. So because it's my very first one, I'm going to stick to that. I might, so as you go above rated burn time, it's more likely that the engine will fail. Uh, to the point where like, it, it's guaranteed to fail at some point. The only question is when, you know, how many more seconds will it take? And here's another useful trick. This, I believe Agathorn um, actually textured this and it's a beautiful looking little sounding rocket, you know, historical. Uh, it looks different if you've played Kerbal before than a lot of parts because notice how it has a zero second burn time and does deliver a bit of punch there. So it's, it's really quick burning. So personally what I do is I set, um, both like because this engine is going to take a little bit of time to spool up and probably as much as like as long as this is going to burn which is a fraction of a second so already right there i'm getting you know a little bit of delta v so a couple other tricks i want to throw onto this thing so first off i'm going to give it fins because i can't steer it now you say what how 
or why build a rocket you can't steer? Well, the fins are going to steer for me. So I put them on, and I'm going to give them a tiny bit of pitch or angling here, just one tiny unit there. And that will cause it to start spinning as it gains speed. The spinning will cause it to, uh, here, let me throw a tiny battery on it as well. Let's see, length thin, so super thin battery, just a little extra charge for transmitting science. There we go. And that spin is going to stabilize it, and it will be very obvious um, that that is so when it's running. So I want a couple of antenna because I want to be able to send science back. And I'm going to put, so one issue I find with a spinning sounding rocket is that it's tricky to click on these because imagine trying to click on these instruments to take science while this thing is spinning. So I set up an action group to log data. Uh, where are you? Analyze telemetry log data. Okay, there we go. And then I can just log it by pressing a button. So I've got a battery that will actually let me run these antenna when I gain new, new science. Uh, action group one is going to take the science. Uh, I threw on a procedural nose cone. I didn't really describe that, but I just made it fit to the... Basically everything is made to the dimensions of this uh, avionics unit here, this little sandy rocket pick part and to the burn time of the engine, which is 50 seconds. So it starts with um, a little bit of data. So the, the, the idea with these test flight rockets is they have rated burn times, so that you know, if you burn them longer than that, you suffer a higher risk of failure. The more you use them, the more reliable they become, still only within that rated burn time. But rather than it failing, say, one out of every five flights, like it, maybe it will at the beginning of me using this, over time, it will become more and more reliable to the point where you know, maybe it'll only fail one out of every 10 or 20 times. So that becomes important. So uh, you, I, I showed you every element of the sounding rocket and what the reasoning was. So now uh, uh, RP0 suggests Kerbal construction time, which allows you to simulate missions. So this thing burns for a very short period of time. So that will be fine. I think the default was five minutes, or let's say, imagine it was, say, 50. You'd see the cost. It's more expensive to do, to simulate a longer mission. But really here, there's no difference. Literally, it's just going to cost me five funds, which is a fraction of what it would cost to actually build it. So let's just simulate a quick mission. That's also why I warped to daytime. I always go into build during the daytime, because actually building this rocket will take you know, a few days, some actual time. However, the construct uh, this um, the test like this simulation happens at the same instant, you know, uh, clock day wise as when you went into the VAB. So that's why I have it made sure it's day outside so I can actually see my launch. Okay. So yeah, the idea of this solid um, Timmy uh, Tiny Tim booster uh, is that uh, the aerodynamic forces like it's I have that set here. You're going to see dynamic pressure, that's going to be a really big number really quickly, and that kind of locks a shape, a craft like this in. Uh, just like kind of how the R7 booster is, you kind of can't turn because the air pressure is so much. But that's better than one of the alternatives, which is that there's so much air pressure that you can't possibly be stable. All right, so let's get everything ready. Let's look at the data. Now notice, I, so I pressed hotkey one, so I get to see, yay, look, full science, but no, in RP0, no science on the ground. So, ready, I stage, that burned through, and then I hit space again to stage it off. Now notice how it wobbled a little at the beginning. Now it picks up speed, so wobbling means it's trying to fall over, but the fact that it's spinning so much means that it can't possibly fall over. So there we go. Now I'm just testing to make sure I can gather science. Yes, I can. Testing to see if I can transmit science. Yes, I can. So this all looks like a regular mission in you know, in stock or in you know whatever you like uh, RP0, but it's actually just a simulation, and you can see the simulator time ticking down here. So even though it looked like I gathered science, tons of Kerbal systems actually believe that I've gathered science. Uh, nonetheless, I, I haven't until I actually go back into the VAB, actually build this mission out. So it looks like this rocket does fine, sir. Yeah, here's the test flight. 
uh, interface, so it's telling me I'm gathering science. That's mean time between failure, so higher number is better. And it's telling me it hasn't failed. So I'm enabling this because now when a part fails, it's going to show up in this little screen. So I don't have to keep this open all the time, even though it's one of the nicer interfaces of the RP0 suite, that's for sure. Um, so because I only went to that rated burn time, you didn't get to see this number decrease. But in some of my later sounding rockets, uh, let's say I set it to burn 60 seconds, you see this number drops off quite quickly after I've been burning for 50 seconds, and then it becomes guaranteed to fail. It's just a question of when. And the max number for this, I think, is 10,000. It might be different for some engines. I think it's configurable through the config files for engines. But anyway, so my first... Uh, testing rocket or sounding rocket sim, uh, simulation got me up to uh, 46 kilometers, which is a pretty good altitude. So that's a quick, uh, just a quick run through the very beginning of an RP0 career. So I'm going to revert back to vehicle assembly. Uh, I like this uh, rocket. It's going to be a good first launch. Um, I'm jumping ahead in my brain a, a bit, but the first contract, which I haven't accepted yet, is to get to 60 kilometers. So. This rocket doesn't quite do that, but look at everything it did with uh, no avionics. It was pretty impressive. So I'm going to accept that contract uh, and carry it out. Let's see, save this rocket. I like it. Uh, it did everything I wanted to do. It had antennas, the ability to gather science, and then I'm going to say to build it. Uh, now, if I click this, it sets the build speed in the VAB, I believe, to what my real build speed is out there. So 0.5, it says this rocket it would take 15 days to build, which is acceptable to me. So that means I'm going to spend the rest of my science points, or my upgrade points, on science, I think. Because I'm fine waiting 15 days between launches for these tiny sounding rockets until I make a little more money and buy my own upgrade points. And you can buy upgrade points. Um, and it's a lot easier on easier difficulties because it's just cash. You just click this, which I can't click now because I don't have the cash, but that would make one more available point, and that means I'd have more to spend. So I'm going to spend two of those on science because I don't need them on building. So now I can see this rocket is being built here. So it's going to take 15 days for that sounding rocket to complete, and I'm going to use that to complete this first flight experiment. So it'll give me that much cash in advance, that much on completion. It's pretty punitive for failure, which is, which is okay. I never really accept a contract until I've already designed the hardware for it, because for more complex things, design is a pain. And this is going to take me a while to complete, getting anything past the Kármán line or 100 kilometers. The I know the next wave of sounding rocket contracts I'll get once I've done my first launch uh, will be up to about 60 kilometers or so, and this rocket I can get up to that. So it's a cheap rocket, it doesn't go very high, but it will help me get my first few contracts. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. I expect this to be a long and detailed series. Just a quick introduction and explanation of a ton of the concepts, uh, build logic, flight logic, you know, strategic planning of an RP0 career as it stands, just the end of 1.0.5 and how things will be at the beginning of, uh, of you know, when everything is upgraded to 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, it's you know, really smoothly refined and everything. You know, we're definitely proud of the way it's set up now, but we, we uh, will continue improving uh, RP0 as time moves on. Thanks for watching.